We are having a chaotic situation in the UK prison system, yet the mainstream media are absolutely quiet about it. All right, let's talk about what's going on in this country with the justice system, the prison system and the policing and everything else. It's not the first time we've talked about all this on this channel. These are, there are a number of branches that are involved when it comes to the basic national security and well, internal security of the nation. One of them is the prison system. And uh, for years, there have been a failed attempt to reform it. At one point, we even had Michael Gove in charge as Justice Secretary. Uh, he lasted about 12 minutes in that job. But now we are hearing some warning signs uh, about what's going on across the prisons in this country. And this is all about the neglect uh, of the system over the last few decades. Now, the uh, PGA prisons, so the Prison Governors Association, uh, come out to uh, give a warning to the establishment to parliamentarians and the MPs are slowly waking up to uh, this uh, potential crisis that's actually happening right now. And only the only person talking about this is Danny Shaw, who is the crime justice and policing commentator. He used to be BBC, but now he's actually doing journalism uh, because he's on his own. And he's come out to actually tell us what the, the, the prison governors have been saying. So he basically said prisons will run out of space in six weeks. Stark warning from uh, uh, Andrea Albert, uh, the president of the Prison Governors Association. Spare capacity is down to 900 as population increases every week and governors have a duty not to breach their operational limits. This is absolute chaotic. Now, population growth, mostly because of immigration, mass migration. So we've got in, the, in, in prison cells, we've got so many foreigners right now, foreign criminals. That's one issue. Secondly, uh, the, the fact that uh, we've had uh, the, the police not really acting too much. Imagine if the police were doing their job properly. The prisons will be filled right now. Uh, we don't have to even wait six weeks. It would have been destroyed years ago. So... In a hard-hitting speech at an all-parliamentary, uh, all-party parliamentary group, Albert uh, says that even open prisons, uh, which did have space, are 97% full. She said, we have hit crisis, adding that only an early release scheme will ease the pressures. Early release scheme. She said the government has got to be brave. So she's suggesting that the government should basically just uh, let some people go, let them be free. And this has been mentioned a number of times in Parliament in recent times. And the issue is who's going to be in charge of assessing who should be allowed to walk freely now before the end of their sentence. Considering the justice, justice system has already been a bit of a mess in terms of sentencing over the last few decades. We don't even give out proper sentencing anymore. Or even when it comes to convictions with CPS. So, as I said, if the police, the CPS, the Sentencing Council and judges and everybody else doing were doing their jobs even better, this prison system would have been destroyed a while ago. Albert says that there were enough cells to last till October, but capacity now forecast to run out in July, so two months from now, less than two months. More police cells under the um, OP, um, Operation Safeguard uh, will be put in place. And she says that if governors are asked to breach their prison capacity, the, the, uh, the, the PGA prisons will take legal action. Um, so there's a massive battle inside the establishment about the establishment's methods on how to police the country and, of course, punish the criminals. We are going to get back to the foreign criminals in a second, by the way. Don't worry. Now, the Minister of Justice, uh, Albert, says that the prison building can't keep pace with rising numbers. 85,000 for the first time since 2017. 85,000. She also calls for more uh, remand uh, prisoners uh, to be let out on tag. Okay, so that's going to be more costly as well. Among those listening, ex-Tory prison minister Andrew Sellers, uh, who says the government is terrified of Daily Mail. Really? I mean, I, I get it. Politicians are weak and feeble. But is that a serious allegation? Because if it is then it's absolutely disgraceful. Absolutely. Sellers agrees with a comment that a long-term prisons minister uh, would help as someone who was sacked after two years. He reveals 
His daughter works in prison service and so maintains a link to what's going on. But the Tory peer says that it's very hard to get interest in the subject. But the whole issue, just like anything else that happens in this country, is the problem of short-termism. So because of the way our electoral system works and the, the, the so-called democracy, uh, uh, politicians are too scared because they are focusing on their next election and not losing their seats and keeping power. Secondly, the other short-termism as, as a problem, it's basically a disease at this point, is the fact that ministers do not last that long. So the average minister's life is a, is a few months. So what's the point of appointing someone to the prison system or anything else, education or welfare or whatever we have, if by the time they sit there, start getting briefed, start coming up with policy ideas, and civil servants keep blocking them every 10 minutes, and then two hours later there's going to be a scandal about them or some sort of witch hunt or something else happens, and then they resign or get sacked, and then you replace them again, and you think this is the best way to run the country. <laughs> It doesn't work. Nothing gets done in this country. And people are wondering, best example is the NHS. What is happening with the NHS? They've been talking about reforming the NHS for the past 200 years. Nothing gets done. Now, let's go to the foreign criminals. Suddenly, it's a weird coincidence. Timing-wise, weird coincidence. The moment this news came out, we had the government uh, releasing a, 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 doing a press release saying, oh, well, the UK and Albania agree to a groundbreaking new arrangement on prisoner transfers. Hundreds of uh, Albanian prisoners to be returned to their home country in exchange for the UK support to help modernize the Albanian prison system. <laughs> so they realized what was happening. What well, they've decided to call the Albanian government saying, you know, we've been keeping all your foreign criminals. Um, can you take some of them? We're going to spend, we're going to use our taxpayer money to improve your prisons in Albania so that we could avoid uh, negative headlines about our prisons being full with your people. I mean, what, what you should have deported them years ago. I don't, I don't understand this. Okay, now, oh. prison job centers, this is brilliant. Prison job centers and business link-ups to help uh, boost ex-offender employment. This also came yesterday on the 24th of May, Wednesday. So more former prisoners are finding work upon release following the rollout of the employment hubs similar to job centers and new work initiatives with firms such as Greg's and co-op and many others so again what a coincidence timing wise it's brilliant that uh, these sort of headlines came out immediately after this potential warning sign was mentioned they are saying oh well we're gonna transfer some of the Albanians back to their country cool you could have done it before, but yeah. And then they also said, oh, by the way, we're also trying to uh, yeah, create job centers in prisons and it's going too well. Uh, let's just make an announcement saying, by the way, we some former uh, convicts uh, are getting jobs. Hmm. <laughs> it's basically, they're just trying to find fire in every corner and say, okay, let's put that out, put that out. Everything's fine. Oh, more fire behind me. Oh, dear. This is the system that we have right now. Everything is a mess, but we are here to hold the power to account and hold the mainstream media who are absolutely silent about all these issues. Subscribe to the channel. I'm Maya Tusi, and we are the media.